Okay, hi, so welcome to this, the first video in the Unit 2 Physics uh, tutorials. So in this video, we're going to have a look at distance time graphs, how we interpret them, and how we actually go about drawing them. So first of all, one thing you've got to realize is that on a distance time graph, we are going to have the distance on the y-axis, okay, and we're going to have the time on the x-axis. Now, I'm going to draw one. I've already labeled the axis for you. So we've got meters for the distance and we have seconds for the time. And that means that if we were looking at speed, we're going to be looking at meters per second. The units are always going to be related. Okay, so if we were doing something like a car and we're talking about kilometers an hour, we would label our axis with kilometers and hours um, on the x axis for time. So let's get rid of this title and go ahead and draw one. So if I had a journey, I could plot points uh, like so. Let's say I had a point there, I had a point here. I had one at 50 seconds, and that went up to here. Then had a point at something like 80 seconds at 600. And then finally, 100 seconds at 700. Okay, now if I go ahead and join those points up, we're going to have something like this. And we're going to describe this now. So very important, you've got to realize there are a few aspects that you need to recognize. So if you have a straight line on a distance time graph, that indicates constant speed. All right, so I'll just write that at the top up here. You can just about see it. Constant speed. All right, that is a result of a straight line because what it's telling you is that over time, the amount of distance covered is not changing. You keep covering the same amount of distance uh, per given time, and that's what constant speed is. If we had a curve, that indicates that the speed is changing, all right, and that is what we call acceleration, and we'll come on to that later. So... What we actually uh, have is that the gradient of the straight line dictates how fast you're going. It actually tells you the speed, right? Because you'll remember that speed is equal to distance over time. Now, if these two things are changing um, in a straight line relationship, so constantly, that means that distance over time is just going to give you the speed. Now, I could work that out. Uh, let's say between 0 and 20 seconds. So this portion of the graph here. What I would do is I would say, well, how much has the distance changed? Because obviously we're going to be working out the gradient of the graph here. So the distance has gone from 0 to 200. So speed is going to be equal to 200 minus 0. Okay. Divided by, and the time the time has changed from 0 seconds to 20 seconds. So the difference is 20 minus 0. That will obviously give us 200 over 20, which will give us an answer of 10 meters per second. Right? You'll sometimes see it written as 10 meters second to the minus 1. That is exactly the same thing. Okay, that means meters per second. And so that will be our speed in the first portion of this graph. Let's get rid of some of these dotted lines. There we go. And we'll get rid of these. But we could describe the whole of this graph, okay, as a journey. We could say that in the first 20 seconds, we're traveling at a constant speed of 10 meters per second until we reach uh, 200 meters from the starting point, okay? Then for the next 10 seconds, we do not move because there is a horizontal line and the distance hasn't changed. Well, if there's no distance covered, then you're not moving, are you? So we have a uh, stop here. We then move again in the next 20 seconds from 200 meters to 500 meters. So you travel 300 meters in that case. Okay. Then we travel, we slow down, and you can see that because the gradient of the graph has decreased, but we still are traveling. We haven't stopped. And we travel another 100 meters in the next. Uh, well, 50 to 80 is to 30 seconds. So we travel 100 meters in 30 seconds. And then we slightly speed up again because this graph then becomes steeper. And you travel uh, another 100 meters, but this time in 20 seconds. All right. And there are a number of ways that questions can be asked. For example, I might say, let's change this color quickly. I might say, work out the average speed 
in the first 50 seconds. All right, the first 50 seconds. Now important here is that uh, it says average speed. If it says average speed, that means we want in total, we don't care about the um, the steepness of the graph and then when it cuts off and then when it gets steeper again. Okay, all we want is the total distance covered and the total time taken. So average speed equals total distance divided by total time. All right. Now, if I put in the numbers here, well, after 50 seconds, we have traveled, let's go up, here's the point, we've traveled 500 meters, all right? So your average speed is equal to 500 meters divided by 50 seconds, which will again give us 10 meters per second, right? But that's not our speed at, uh, at the point of 50 seconds, which I'll show you in a second, right? That is our average speed from start to finish after 50 seconds. All right. Now, let's have a look at another, um, another part. I could say, work out the speed, okay, between, or I'll say from time, 30 to 50 seconds, all right? Because this time, we're going to show you that the speed at 50 seconds so this is where we ended last time, is not actually 10 meters per second as we worked out, right? Because what we worked out was the average. So this time I'm going to say, well, speed is equal to distance over time. Now, what's the distance I covered between 30 and 50 meters? Well, we start at 200 meters and we end at 500 meters. And so the distance is going to equal 500 minus 200. That will give us a difference. Now, how long did it take? Well, between 30 and 50 seconds, that's obviously 20 seconds. But that is 50 minus 30, right? If we want to write it out in full. So that will give us, the difference is 300 divided by 20 seconds. And that will give us a grand total of 15 meters per second. So in this portion of the graph, okay, we are traveling at 15 meters per second. All right, so I hope this is making sense. I'm going to ask one last question on this graph, and I want you to pause the video and have a go at it yourself. Okay, so I want you to work out the average speed uh, in the whole journey. The whole journey. So that means from start to finish, which is at this 100 second mark. All right, so pause the video now and try and have a go at that. All right, well, I hope you had a go. Let's go through it now. Well, like I said, the average speed is going to be your total distance divided by your total time. So all we're gonna say is that our speed is equal to our distance, and now the total distance, we finish at 700 meters, and we started at zero. So the total distance is 700 meters. And our total time, well, this whole journey uh, takes place over 100 seconds from 0 to 100 so that is 100 seconds right so that will give us a grand uh, total in our answer of 700 divided by 100 which is 7 meters per second all right that means that if we didn't stop if we just decided to go at one speed from start to finish, for us to um, end up at the same place, we would be traveling at a, dis at a speed sorry, of seven meters per second. I can draw that in red here, uh, because if we had a straight line from the finishing point to the starting point, like, oh, there we go, like so, okay. That graph shows a speed of seven meters per second. All right. If we, if you calculated the speed or the gradient of that graph, it would be seven meters per second, and that is the average speed of um, of our journey in orange. All right. Now the last thing I want to quickly go over, and we won't do any calculations because you don't have to, is acceleration. Right. If I said that in this journey, right, the second part from 30 to 50 seconds, the car was actually um, 
accelerating all the way through rather than oh bear with me let's get this back there we go so i'm going to say the car was actually accelerating between 30 and 50 seconds rather than traveling at constant speed right now if something is accelerating it means it's getting faster and that means that the gradient is getting steeper okay so we're going to start off quite flat and then it's going to get steeper and steeper and steeper and that would produce a line that might look something like this there we go it's quite drastic but you can see that at the end we are very steep and at the start we are very shallow and so this is acceleration all the way through in real life it wouldn't be that drastic because by the looks of things that speed at the end is really 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 high but you get the idea now if vice versa we are told that we start really fast and we decelerate until we reach um, uh, the 50 second point at 500 meters then it would look something like this start off fast and you're slowly curving and getting slower and slower and slower there we go because that is a curve and it's not a straight line we it shows that the speed is changing as the curve is getting shallower rather than steeper that means that we have deceleration rather than acceleration all right now with acceleration and deceleration you won't be asked to work out the speed um, by just using speed equals distance over time because that would work out your average speed if you wanted to work out the actual speed at a point on a curve then what you'd have to do is draw a tangent let's say for example I wanted to work out the speed at this exact moment at 40 seconds well let's get rid of that cross from there what you would do this would obviously be a smoother curve is you would draw a tangent at 40 seconds okay and this would give you a straight line that tells you the gradient of that curve at that point and then you could find the gradient of this tangent line and remember the gradient of a straight line gives you the speed and so the gradient of that tangent would give you the speed at that point on the curve all right so that was quite a lot of information in a short space of time but we're going to stop there and next time we're going to be going over velocity time graphs so I hope that's helped and please do if you have any questions on that feel free to send me a direct email using the link below or post a comment in the comment box and I'll be sure to get back to you. Uh, but as usual please like and subscribe because it really does help me out. But I look forward to seeing you in the next one.